You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Samia Sayed. Welcome to the show. Coming up later, we have an interview with the British Columbia Muslim Association over a donation they made for flood relief towards Indigenous populations in the community. But first, let's go over some headlines. Drop the vaccination tax, says the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. More Canadian Rangers needed for COVID outbreak in remote First Nations community. Baraka Box now making home deliveries in Hamilton. Genocide watch to issue an emergency genocide alert on India. And now the details. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association is calling out Quebec's plan to tax unvaccinated adults as a violation of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. According to the association, the tax impairs autonomy over one's body and can drive people away from public health services. Kara Zibwell, the acting general counsel for the association, told local media sources that Quebec should discard the constitutionally vulnerable proposal. The new tax proposal comes as Quebec reports record high COVID infections, with more than 2,700 announced yesterday. Conditions remain dire in Bearskin Lake First Nation after Canadian Rangers were deployed by the federal government to assist the locals as COVID cases soar in the community. On Monday, six Rangers were provided the frontline assistance for necessities, far less than the 40 Rangers Bearskin Lake First Nation had asked for. In two weeks, the small community of 400 saw more than half of their population infected with the virus. MacArthur, commanding officer of the 3rd Canadian Ranger Patrol Group, told local media sources that 11 more will be deployed soon. Hamilton's Seoul Halal Food Bank announced this past weekend that they will be making home deliveries given the high number of COVID cases. Mishka Social Services operates the food bank through its Baraka Box program, hosted at Hamilton Mountain Mosque. Mishka put out a call for local volunteers, to which dozens responded, and were able to make over 170 home deliveries during the partial lockdown. Board member Nahum Azam told local media sources that they wanted to get essential supplies out to those struggling to make ends meet, while ensuring their safety. Professor Greg Stanton, the founder of the prestigious Genocide Watch, declared that India is at its eighth stage of genocide, just one step away from conducting extermination. Addressing close to 500 leaders in an emergency briefing held by Justice for All, Stanton announced that Genocide Watch is issuing a genocide emergency alert for India. India is the only country with two previous genocide alerts, one for Assam and one for Indian-held Kashmir. Nadine Menza, chairperson of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, addressing the same briefing of the Save India from Fascism project, noted the discrimination faced by Muslims and Christians in India. That's it for the headlines. Now with us, we have Brother Muhammad Asad Gondal, the president of the British Columbia Muslim Association, otherwise known as BCMA. BCMA has engaged in many commendable programs or actions, one of which is a $35,000 check for the flood relief for First Nations in Merit and Chilliwack, and will be the focus of our interview today. Welcome, Brother Muhammad. It's great to have you here. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for the Canadian News giving this opportunity to reach out the audience and the viewers through you guys. Mm -hmm. So to start us off, can you tell us what is BCMA? Uh, BCMA stands for British Columbian Muslim Association, which is the largest organization throughout the BC. And with the 17 branches and chapters, two public school and one like outclass barriers system in place with a lot of social activities around BC. Mm -hmm. And why did BCMA decide to raise this $35,000 then? Uh, this is not the ones we this is a history of BCMA that whenever the need arise not within the Canada outside the Canada whenever the need arise we engage our community and we always uh, raise the funds to reach out the community in large at a need whatever the need they would be mm -hmm. and was this a collective effort with uh, all across the BCMA mosques and institutions uh, that's not only BCMA, as we said, that we are 
combinedly working with the different organizations which are working with us, like Islamic Relief, IDRF, and Penny Appeal. That was a collective appeal. And that's not the only one donation we made it. Actually, there was uh, the, like a lines of series of the donations which we built and uh, made it through our different cities. Mm -hmm. And what was the most previous donation then? That's the last previous one, 35K. Okay. And do you know how many mosques or institutions that are connected to BCMA specifically participated in donating this amount? Uh, the, as I said earlier, we have 17 branches and chapter. This, when I say branches and chapter, it represents the Islamic center or complete masjid. Mm -hmm. And so you said this is not the first time it's part of a um, process. And so what was the last time uh, other than the $35,000 that BCMA participated in? Uh, just uh, two weeks before that, we, we reached out to the Abbotsford community. The same, uh, we worked with the one of the food bank in Abbotsford to reach out the community of the need. We, about 12,000K, I guess, uh, probably we hand out. And with the truckload of the stuff, we give it to them for the other things of the needs. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned previously that you don't only raise donations for local issues, uh, you raise donations for external issues as well. What does that count as? Uh, like, as I said, the Muslim Muslim organization is uh, for here for the catering the need of the Muslims and people are here. It's a dance dance community, like a multicultural. So everybody came from one of their own ethnic background, and wherever the situation arises, like for example, BC flood, uh, the problems in. Uh, Gaza or problems in uh, Middle East or problem in Pakistan or problem in Afghanistan, wherever we feel that uh, the urgent need arise. So mm -hmm. we always engage our community and uh, collect the funds and uh, we try to transfer to the, uh, the ones that are approved through the CRA. Mm -hmm. And how does that process look like? You know, the idea of uh, different causes coming up to raise money for. So once you're alerted of a cause, what does the process look like in terms of raising the money for it? When I really look down towards the teaching of Islam, this is what I personally feel like uh, for a believer, a true believer, he cannot be a believer unless he feels the same pain what he's feeling amongst the other Muslim. So this is the teaching of Islam where we are closely working and our main community is also from uh, the same belief. That's why they feel and felt really down when when the any community around the globe they are in trouble or problem it's mm -hmm. not only muslims like this other community we do we do raise the funds and try to hand in to other communities as well mm -hmm. and what was the reaction from the community in terms of this $35,000 donation then welcoming appreciating Mm -hmm. And I saw that there was a ceremony uh, for the donation. How, can you tell us how the ceremony went? That went very well, actually. That was uh, the we engaged the city mayor and with his all council mm -hmm. and some delegates from our organization with the Islamic Relief and IDRF. That was very welcoming. They give us enough time, and they really appreciate uh, the effort of a collective effort of VCMA with the other allies. Mm -hmm. And recently, British Columbia was hit with a wave of floods that affected uh, quite severely the local communities. Did BCMA provide any on-site help during that time? Yes, some of our branches there, which are towards the east side, like Abbotsford, Kelowna, they are directly work working with the community and they are giving their help not only the needs uh, of the kitchen, they are also trying to give them some support. For example, this time was a need for having a plumber on site, electrician on site. So we try to gather all the resources of uh, the like uh, industry, which is construction. So people are giving their enough time, like as a volunteer, going out and helping the farmers community as well. Mm -hmm. And regarding this recent donation, again, it was a, almost an interfaith uh, engagement between the indigenous and the Muslim community. Is this the first time that the specific engagement between the indigenous and Muslim was pursued by the BCMA? No, I told that uh, just a week before we came up with our closely $12,000, uh, 
and a lot of stuff uh, for like uh, winter clothing, uh, the blankets and other stuff. So that was all goes to indigenous communities in Abbotsford. Mm -hmm. And you've been telling me so far that you felt that's very important because your community members come from different backgrounds as well as the area that you live in to maintain these relationships relationships with different faith groups. So can you tell us of why you think it's so important other than um, your community members coming from there? First of all, I would say there are two things. One is the teaching of Islam and one is itself the humanity. The message of the humanity itself is very clear that we are a humans more than anything. And our prime responsibility is to help the whole humanity when the need arise. So that's exactly our Islam's teach us and being Islamic uh, organization, we try to fulfill our responsibility under the faith and under the citizen of Canada as well. Mm -hmm. And this whole process of collecting donations as well as handing out relief packs, is it done with volunteers or just the management team? Uh, you will be surprised this BCMA, it's a huge organization. His whole process, more than 90% from directors up to me, we are all volunteer. We have like a teaching staff and other administrative staff who are salaried, but 90% of the organization's affairs run through the, uh, the volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask a question with volunteers specifically, because I know for a lot of mosques in Canada, you see that there's not a lot of young volunteers. And is that a problem that BCMA also sees? Uh, yes, you are right. Like we do encourage, uh, we have programs that's encouragement, encouragement plans for the youth to join too. But the, yes, you are right. We are going through the like same challenges, not have enough youth on board with us. Mm -hmm. um, so I would finally like to conclude by asking, what does this mean for future ventures? What do you plan to do in the future, whether it's with the indigenous communities or even more external faith groups? We are open with everybody like a Canadian. And uh, we are living in Canada with the responsibility and with the understanding that united we are strong, regardless the community. And that's the only way we can grow. And BCMA aim everything in future to bring in action wherever and whatever need for the other community as well. Mm -hmm. Well said, Brother Muhammad. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us to have this interview. Yeah, thank you very much for the Canadian News giving me opportunity to reach out. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. That's it from our Toronto studios tonight. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more Canadian Muslim content. In the meantime, stay safe.